a busy street. A quiet stretch of land. A pink building with roots deeper than the trees planted by man. Erected by the prophet of gold, but now the only gold left that shines its blessing upon this great monument is a tree's autumn leaves under the sun. Bidwell Mansion was built in 1868 by the vision of one man, John Bidwell. He wrote, in the spring of 1839, living at the time in the western part of Ohio, being then in my twentieth year, I conceived a desire to see the great prairies of the west. John's travels eventually led him to California. Hastening up the valley, we stroked the trail of the Oregon Company on what is now known as Chico Creek Rancho Chico, and to me one of the loveliest of places. John's discovery of gold allowed him to purchase 30,000 acres, where he built an adobe and became a farmer. Almonds, peaches, hops, prunes, and flour. An artifact from John's flour mill. John's flour mill today a cold building. It faces Bidwell Mansion as if to say, look, we too are still here. Bidwell's store to the south. Barely recognizable with today's facelift. John Bidwell gave away property to build up his new town. He became himself an established political being. He met Annie Kennedy in Washington, D.C. while engaged as a congressman. They exchanged letters for more than two years until the day she arrived as Mrs. Annie Bidwell. The mansion was complete just in time for her arrival. Together, the Bidwells hosted prominent guests, such as President Hayes, General Sherman, Susan B. Anthony, Frances Willard, Governor Stanford, John Muir, and Asa Gray. Annie brought culture and society to Chico. She was deeply devoted to her moral and religious lifestyle. She took particular interest in the local natives. Today, what's left of their story lives on. Only by those who tell it. although their legacy is enjoyed by all who live in Chico. What were the voices of the past? The thoughts, the laughter, the sound of instruments once considered modern, now replaced by a new modern. What was Bidwell's vision for their legacy? The park, given as a gift to the city.
This gift was shared beyond borders through the movie called Adventures in Robin Hood. It is still here. A tree, once regarded as the world's largest oak, now nothing but a broken memory. Nineteen hundred, our founder dies. Annie prepares the future for her death, which takes place eighteen years later. She gives her home to her church, but normal school buys it five years later for use as a dormitory and school rooms. What began as a governor's home became a protected state park almost a hundred years later in 1964. Once a home and a social center. Today, government property. Inhabited. Empty. Today, this building faces a tough economy and a personal battle. The state will close its doors and place its artifacts in storage. Citizens of the community who recognize Bidwell Mansion's cultural significance join forces to raise money so the landmark can remain open. Some even want to take the mansion back from California and return it to a local ownership. Bidwell's mansion, once a home among trees, now looks down upon all those who dwell on its original 30,000 acres, upon those who live and study, who breathe the trees' breezes, who enjoy the park and the agriculture, who share the land that Bidwell gave to them, to us. What will its tomorrow be? Who will keep the legacy alive? Who will open its doors to guests, as Annie and John once did? Who is responsible for giving back to our founder what he gave to us? Who is responsible?